Welcome back everyone, Twitch is here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another fresh look, and today, we are going to be checking out not one, not two, but three new McFarlane Toys uh, DC Multiverse action figures, and of course, uh, yeah, the main one being the one, the one that I really wanted was the classic Martian Manhunter, which is starting to hit Target store shelves now, and then we got two other ones, uh, just to throw them in the video, just to kind of beef it up. A little bit, you know what I mean? So we have Atomic Blight, he's a single release from Batman Beyond, more Batman Beyond, the comic book offshoot, not the animated series, uh, but yeah, you see the backside. Now, keep in mind, this is pretty much the exact same one as the year-long collect-to-build wave. Here is the barcode as well. I picked mine up at Target. And then, on the video game aspect side, right? which is a green arrow. So I saw this and I was like, okay, I, I don't know why I blanked. And I knew this was the Injustice green arrow, but in my head at the time of buying it, I was like, oh yeah, it's just like what green arrow looks like. No, don't, don't listen to me. This is Injustice 2 green arrow. Found him at Target as well. And uh, here's the barcode. And then of course, probably the one that y'all came here to watch. That's what I would have done. This is the gold label for whatever that means at this point from them. Just to clarify, it does mean like the exclusive for that store, the limited edition, that kind of thing. They're only going to make so many of those. That's what Gold Label basically is at this point. And here's the barcode for Monsieur Martian Manhunter as well. So this is going to be fun. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new DC Multiverses Atomic Blight Classic Martian Manhunter and Injustice 2 Green Arrow by McFarlane Toys. And while I got all you Martians here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my DC Multiverse videos. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates. I guarantee you'll find something here that you like. Now, we got some figures to talk about. So we'll kick it off with Atomic Blight. And he's got his little power effects. He's ready to uh, throw some radiation around and they are the they work right we we get it this is powers and he throws green radiation yada yada they also kind of look like pom-poms you know what i mean cheerleading style but uh the figure largely i thought that the figure is the same and the body the colors everything about the actual figure is the exact same the one difference being that in the little floating head tube he has an open mouth and then there's fire like he's starting to crack through his containment shell so you can see inside there's basically a spinal cord and then you put that right back on there bingo bango you can rotate that and have him look either which way the effects simply just go right on to his fists they look fine especially if you're out on the field for the football game give me a b l i g h t blight that's what we spell. You see what I mean there. He's an okay figure, if I'm being honest. And then you have Arrow. And again, this is from the video game Injustice 2. And again, much just like Blight. I mean, if you miss Blight, you can get him. But if you miss the, the first Green Arrow, if you're not a fan of that, you can get this Green Arrow. These are kind of just okay figures, to be honest. He comes with two accessories. You've got the bow. It's, it's not a string. It's just It looks like an old Ninja Turtle weapon, to be honest with you. And then you have a pack of arrows. Like, you know, Legend of Zelda style, right? You found arrows. They're all one color. Again, very Ninja Turtle 80s Playmate style. There's absolutely no paint on any of these accessories, just FYI. Green Arrow himself. The costume looks good. The face portrait, it's it's okay. I know the portrait is there. I think it's just how it was painted. The, the scruff. The hair is good. I think that's got a nice wash. The mask is good. I would say I think it's just the flesh tone that's that's really off. Plus, my uh, hairline, it, the face is kind of coming off. So I don't have to fix that. I don't know. Largely, this one is going to be like if you're a fan of Green Arrow, he's just okay. He's just okay. He's a Green Arrow that could fit in your Justice League collection for now. However, the body has a lot of paint to it, a lot of design, a lot of deco. So I'll give him that all day. There's lots of little intricate design details all over the costume which of course McFarlane does that in spades in terms of let's say the quiver on the back you see it just kind of ports into his back which looks like it's going right into his skin ouch but uh, you put the arrows right in there it's I mean it's fairly self-explanatory and 
it looks good on your shelf. Just like just pose there. He'll do the trick. He's just not that exciting of a green arrow, unfortunately. And the articulation kind of matches that excitement. He's kind of stiff, especially in the abdomen. Of course, he's got double-jointed knees and elbows and all that jazz. But, yeah, largely he's just kind of like, again, yeah, all right, that's that's fine. You could put the bow over his shoulder just like that in terms of like a weapon storage situation. Everything is just like halfway there and two steps back kind of thing with this green arrow. And then you have uh, the figure that I was actually looking forward to. This is the classic version of Martian Manhunter. And what a green on that guy. Really nicely done, like a Slimer green. That's pretty cool. The blues are nice, the reds are nice. This is what I'd like to see now kind of going forward with McFarlane Toys. Going more for the classic looks of these characters. We've done death metal, we've done the modern stuff. Sprinkle that in, totally. But let's see some return to form of some classic stuff. And this is, again, right up my alley. I like his big chunky boots. Again, I'll show you in just a second. This is the exact same figure of Martian Manhunter that was released. He's just more classified now. If you catch my drift, he's got the same kind of cape. It's a nice billowy cape. Uh, can't complain about McFarlane capes. They always look pretty good. The paint is pretty stellar on this. And I think he's got a good head sculpt to him. I like the line work over the lips, the eyes. Is it me or is his head a little bit too small or is the collar too big? I can't really decide. I mean, it works for me. I just, I think that his head should just be a little bit bigger or maybe it's just the right size. I kind of go either way for it. The articulation works for the most part. I can't complain about that. He just looks good. Again, more classic looking figures, classic costumes. That's the kind of DC that I want to see. You can see right there, a little, uh, little Martian butt cheek hanging out. That's, <laughs> that's funny. And you have the, uh, you have the double jointed knees. You got the feet, the boots. The articulation works really well. He's got toe articulation. So overall, I'm just going to tell you this. I'm happy with the way this guy is. He has, let's say, a little bit of overlap for the paint around the boots. Maybe you can look at a few of those uh, in the store if you come across a few. But uh, overall, they pretty much captured the look of Martian Manhunter, and it totally works. I'm going to show you in just a second the one big bummer with this figure. And again, it resides in one of the biggest problems with McFarlane Toys, which is Scalature. And as you can see, you have a really cool-looking Martian Manhunter, but then he's entirely too small in terms of the height. Martian Manhunter is tall, and that's how I've always seen him partly because justice league unlimited will say that and really with the classic comics yeah he is a little bit tall he's at least taller than batman we'll say that right but uh, if you use let's say different batmans kind of measures up green arrow he's a little bit too tall he's just yeah you know i mean it's the scale for all these things that's where he's always kind of had these problems same thing with other justice league members from aquaman to green lantern from this arrow even though it's not comic book based you can kind of use them as that and lo and behold you kind of have built over time a sort of justice league you know what i mean but the scale the looks the design of all the different eras all the different costumes is all over the place and if i'm being 100 percent honest i think flash's face says it all but if you were wondering how the prior released Martian Manhunter stacks up to this new classic version. Yeah, there's some changes here and there, but largely it's the same figure. The two blights, again, same figure, different head sculpts, different powers. I think that the first release, the Target exclusive blight, works more in terms of that classic Batman Beyond look with his whole you know, skeleton hand. You can see the powers, right? So, I really wish we would have gotten a more classic look with the whole, you know, church uniform for Blight. This Atomic Blight is cool, and I think the new one that we looked at today more encompasses that in so many ways. And then to go from the CW's arrow to now this more Injustice 2 arrow, I am not a fan of the CW arrow whatsoever. This Injustice 2 one is by far leaps and bounds better. And then, of course, here's some other video game-inspired characters to go with your arrow so overall these are largely just yeah they're okay there's some goods there's some bad there's some stuff that i would prefer that they didn't do that you know that kind of thing but i would say martian manhunter man he's just 
It's cool. It just needed to be a little bit bigger. So that's going to wrap it up for my look at these three new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse figures. And you've heard my thoughts. So now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything DC Multiverse. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, yes, just to nail home again, we've gone from modern to death metal and everything else in between. Let's see a little bit more classic. And if what we've uh, been seeing lately with the whole 90s era, I'm definitely down for those. And when we do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios. <laughs>